What's going on y'all? So I actually wasn't going to show you guys this until I started my Ryzen PC build, but it's taking me a little bit more time to uh, get parts than I initially thought. So I decided screw it. I'm going to show you guys uh, what Intermax sent me not too long ago. Uh, this is their Lick Fusion 240 uh, CPU cooler. I hope I pronounced that right. Lick, Lick Fusion, Lick, Liquid, Lick, Lick Fusion, something like that. But uh, yeah, it's a uh, 240 millimeter AIO. It's got uh, addressable LEDs on it, which you guys know are the uh, most important thing of any CPU cooler, especially these days. And uh, yeah, we're gonna take it out of the box, uh, test it out a little bit and see if it uh, performs well. And uh, if I'll be using it in a future PC build. Now for you guys that have been watching the videos before, you'll know that I am actually a big advocate for air cooling. That's what I prefer, it's just less stuff to deal with, usually quieter. Uh, in my experience, so uh, that's normally what I go with, but I know a lot of you guys like these uh, AIOs, so I figured it uh, wouldn't hurt to take a look at it. So let's go ahead and pull everything out of the box. So we've got a 240 millimeter radiator here. I think it's like 27 millimeters thick, something like that. Uh, aluminum, pretty much standard when it comes to uh, AIOs. We've got sleeve braided tubing, which looks pretty nice. I like it. Uh, it's a little bit skinnier than some of the other AIOs I've used. It'd be interesting to see if that affects the uh, cooling or not, or maybe it just makes it easier to, you know, kind of reposition in your case if you've got to move it around somewhat. You will notice that if you are looking at the uh, tubes, there's actually this weird piece on there that looks like kind of like a cap at the top, and that's actually the pump itself. So uh, Intermax has done something different with this one. Instead of having the pump uh, incorporated into the CPU block, they've actually got it separate here. Uh, right next to the radiator. Now I'm not sure if they did this for any specific reason other than patent reasons or maybe there's uh, some noise or performance benefit behind it, but uh, I don't know, I kind of like it. It's different. And then we've got a copper-based CPU block with uh, nickel coating on the bottom. Uh, this actually looks kind of cool, at least from an aesthetic standpoint. You've got a flow indicator in the middle, so when liquid is going through that thing, it's going to spin round and round and round, which is something that you'll probably just stare at for a <laughs> pretty long time. But uh, yeah, I got a cool flow indicator there. Uh, the little clear stuff around the uh, ring of the block is for the lighting. As I mentioned before, this does have addressable LEDs on it, so you will be able to get your uh, lighting scheme on if that is something that you're into. Uh, addressable LEDs just gives you a little bit extra control over your standard uh, RGB lighting. Now one thing I was not expecting in this box is uh, some extra coolant. Apparently Intermax wants you to be able to replace this coolant if you need to. They say if the uh, flow indicator ever stops spinning then you need to uh, replace the coolant and there's a little port on the side of the block here where you can uh, go ahead and install some additional kind. I almost forgot about the fans. We've got 220 millimeter fans here. As you guys can see on the outside ring there, that is where your uh, RGB lighting is going to go. These are black fans here. It looks like at each corner, we've got uh, little rubber inserts there to stop the uh, vibration from the fan. So that's nice. That usually helps with keeping things quiet. And uh, aside from that, we've got our hardware for the actual install of the CPU cooler. Looks like we got a uh, extra back plate here, which is gonna replace the factory one. I'm not really a fan of that. I like in Ryzen, a lot of the CPU coolers uh, incorporate the uh, factory back plate. Uh, it makes installation a lot easier when you don't have to worry about that thing. So we'll see uh, if that's an issue or not. There's also a little control box in here. Um, if you do not have a motherboard that allows you to control addressable LEDs, um, this little control thing will allow you to um, set your lighting colors or pattern or scheme, whatever you want to do. So we'll probably have to hook that up to mine. I don't think I have a uh, motherboard that has uh, addressable LED pins on it. So I'll have to take a look at that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and install this thing. I think I'm going to install it in my main system. Either that or I'm going to end up switching to a uh, different case to uh, install this thing. We'll see. I think I'm gonna mount this in my current case. The only question is where? As you guys can see, I am running an inverted setup still, so uh, that makes things a little bit more complicated. I could maybe mount it up front here, but I think the drive cages actually will be blocking the radiator a little bit, so I gotta figure out something there. Or I can mount it maybe at the top here, but I don't know if the hoses 
from the uh, AIO are going to interfere with the graphics card at all. So uh, that's one possibility. One possibility. Uh, you guys comment down below and let me know where do you think I should mount this thing. Originally, I thought I was going to put it down here at the bottom, but the power supply is actually in the way, so that's not going to be an option. So. Uh, yeah, probably up front or at the uh, top there. Um, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do. The one shitty thing about moving these drive cages is I don't know what to do with uh, this extra SSD or even the hard drive. I can't mount the SSD on the back, at least not on an official tray. I mean, I could just throw it back there, but uh, yeah, there's, n there's only one SSD uh, mounting tray on the back of the case and it's already being taken up. So. I'm not really sure what to do with it. I think I only need to remove one of these cages though in order to get the radiator to fit. So I may just figure something out. Uh, originally I wanted to actually move, remove this five and a quarter inch uh, cage altogether, but there were some screws on this case that were so damn tight I couldn't actually get the thing apart. So I had to leave it there. But ultimately if I could remove this, and then just move these both up. That would be the best option if I'm gonna mount it at the front. But I think that I may just try to move this top cage with the SSD in it and just tuck it somewhere else. So I uh, got a lot to think about, so we'll figure it out. By the way, this is the current cooler that I'm running. It's from Noctua. Uh, I ran a few benchmarks just to give us a baseline with this cooler so that when we uh, test the one for Intermax. We kind of have a baseline to uh, compare up against. I don't really expect them to compete. This is just more for informational purposes. guys it's done and I went ahead and mounted it at the front actually I figured that was probably the most uh, practical place at all out of all of the options that I had here um, I thought about mounting it at the top but I thought if I had like uh, it exhausting here maybe it might starve the uh, graphics card for air or if I had it as an intake it might be blowing hot air down onto the uh, GPU there so I decided against doing that so in this case, I just mounted the uh, radiator up front. So that is uh, an intake, air is gonna be coming through here. And I figure at least in this case, we've got a fan that, you know, if it just goes straight through, bam, it'll uh, blow out the back. So hopefully that will work just fine. Neutron science tips. I, uh, I don't know if that's correct, but it sounds good. So <laughs> we're gonna roll with it. So yeah, basically got this thing mounted upside down. You can see the pump here right at the uh, bottom of the case. Radiator up front. Got the uh, hoses here right to the cooler, which is, uh, I guess it's technically upside down, but it should still work just fine. I'll be honest, I'm not really a huge fan of the hoses for AIOs or even soft tubing. I usually like uh, either hard tubing or uh, air cooling, but I think overall this doesn't look too bad. So I'm just gonna peel all the plastics and stuff off and then uh, we'll fire this thing up, let you guys see the lighting and all that. And then we will test it out. There's the fans there up front, by the way. So not a bad look, hopefully they're not too bad. Oh, also I wanna show you guys uh, what I did at the back here. So here's what it looks like from behind, uh, pretty clean. I ended up moving the uh, SSD here. Uh, just in this location, I threw some double-sided tape on the uh, back of it, so yay for no moving parts. That'll uh, allow me to do that. So uh, normally it was sitting like right here. Well, actually the hard drive was right here and the SSD was right here. Um, so I just moved it up one and then stuck the SSD up here. I didn't really have to change the routing for my uh, cables at all. And then I threw this little grommet here at the bottom just so you don't see like these cables and stuff so just to clean it up from the front but uh yeah that shouldn't be moving and that should work uh just fine there is also a little control module right here this is what you'll need to use if you don't have a motherboard with uh addressable led pins on it which i don't i'm using the uh, crosshair 6 hero motherboard i think only the like x470 boards have the uh, addressable LED pins on it. Maybe some Intel boards, I'm not sure on that end. But uh, yeah, if you don't have that, um, you can use this to actually control the lighting. 
So we will be uh, testing that out and seeing how that works out. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. It's just my little cable management to my fans and stuff going on there. Oh, and that thing is SATA powered. So I've got a little plug there going to a uh, SATA connector. All right, that's pretty much it. Let's fire this thing up. Before we get into the benchmarks, I wanted you guys to have a listen to the pump noise real quick. The last Intermax cooler that I used sounded like a freaking 747. This one is a lot more tolerable. So let me just shut the hell up for a minute so you guys can hear it. Much better. All right, so what we're gonna do is start off by running an X264 stability test. I already did it for the uh, Noctua uh, NHU12S. Um, just as a baseline, we're running at uh, 27 degrees uh, ambient temp at Celsius. We had a minimum of 44C and an average of 77.3C. Uh, so just keep that in mind when we are looking at uh, any potential gains by going to this Intermax cooler. So I'm going to do four loops of that test, which should take about uh, 20 minutes or so. And then we'll come back and see uh, what our temperatures were looking like. All right, people, it's been 20 minutes and uh, it is hot as hell in here. So excuse the AC in the background, but uh, I got the final results. Let's take a look at them. So uh, after uh, that X264 test, looks like with the uh, Lick Fusion 240, we had an average of 75.3 uh, degrees Celsius, which is a uh, about a two degree improvement over the uh, Noctua NHU12S, which uh, had an average of 77.3. I would have liked that to be, uh, you know, maybe about two degrees cooler than uh, the Noctua one, just because I don't know, I expected the liquid cooler to do a little bit better than that, but uh, we could be limited on airflow with this particular case. That's why normally when I do any comparisons, I do it on an open bench rather than in a case itself. So that's entirely possible, but we did still see some improvement. And uh, to be honest, I'm actually satisfied with the CPU cooler. The build quality is pretty decent. The pump noise is not annoying at all, which is a big thing for me with uh, these AIOs. I hate loud pump noise and uh, I can definitely stand this one without any issues. We got the adjustable LEDs, which I don't know, it's kind of a thing if you're into that. Um, I think they're a lot cooler than just the normal RGB. So if you do like that kind of stuff, I'd probably urge you to uh, go the uh, addressable route. And uh, yeah, I would say Intermax did a pretty good job. Obviously, if you're going to be getting one of these, maybe uh, keep in mind the case that you have so that you are getting optimal airflow and also where you're placing it too. Uh, maybe it would have did a little bit better if we place it at the top of the case. Uh, who knows? I'm not going to test that right now, but uh, all in all, I would say Intermax did a pretty good job. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to give this video a like if you like this type of content. Subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jerry Neutron. And until next time, guys, I'm out of here. See ya!